this way. The Honourable Member for Flinders. Thank you, Mr the Speaker. Opposition. My question without notice is to the Treasurer. I remind the Treasurer of his commitment on the 18th of March 1990 during the election campaign that the current account deficit would stabilise at about 25 to 3 per cent of GDP within the coming Parliament. Does the Treasurer agree that, even on the basis of optimistic assumptions, that achievement of this objective would require gross national expenditure to increase at less than a third of the rate of growth experienced under the seven years of the Hawke government? The Honourable the Treasurer. Uh, Mr Speaker, the government never made a commitment about it. It, made, it, made, it said it was an objective and one which we, which we believe is capable of being achieved. That is, that we can draw enough net exports from the system over the next couple of years to see the current account reach a stabilisation point on the debt, which is somewhere between probably two and a half and three per cent. And uh, that's why uh, we have uh, we have the current policy mix in place. And as you've noticed in the December quarter accounts, which were released in the election campaign, we had succeeded in taking GE from a growth of 9.1 per cent for the year to September down to about 4.6 per cent for the year to uh, uh, December. And uh, that was very much in balance with uh, GDP, which was running at about 4.5 per cent. And uh, therefore, that balance. Uh, uh, looks uh, a lot, uh, a lot uh, more conducive to an improvement on the current account than we'd when we had G and E or demand running twice product growth. Now I've said, and the Prime Minister has said, very, very many times that policy will mean in the next few years that GDP must stay ahead of G and E, and so that means one of two things: it means that we must run a sensible demand management regime, but not the one you would run which is comatizing the place, and we must lift GDP by lifting production. And the best way of lifting production is to maintain investment. But you can't maintain investment with punishing levels of interest rates with a monetary policy which would eradicate inflation over three or five years, which was your promise, your policy position. Those kind of attendant interest rates would not allow investment to continue. And if investment continues, GDP will not continue to grow. We've got the capital stock now moving up at about 6 per cent a year. So hopefully we'll reach the point that those dreadful years in between 1968 and 1973, when the capital stock was left to decline to such miserable levels that we gave ourselves a huge current account and external problem, we'll get the current account, the capital stock back to critical mass, and even with rates of investment slower than the last couple of years, then add to that capital stock to trade our way out of trouble. And it's finding that balance between maintaining profitability, maintaining profitability and investment, and at the same time maintaining a strong fiscal and monetary and wage position to keep demand in check. It is getting that balance, which, which is what policy setting is about. But at least that's the balance we want. The balance you want, your policy, which was, was a recession. That's the policy you wanted. You wanted a recession. What you would have done had you won the election on the, on the, in the week after when I, when I spoke to the central bank and said we should take cash rates off another 1 per cent, you would have said leave them on. Don't give them a break. Let's grind the place into the ground. That'll cut the wages growth. It'll put the unemployment up and we can do it then. But of course you never follow through with the second part of the scenario. How then do you ever improve the productive base of the place if the investment stops? That's the one bit you'll never deal with. You, we understand how you would sit on demand. That's just by, just by simply crushing the place. But what, out of, out of the ashes, how do you expect uh, investment to come back and how would you get production back? I mean, frankly, you wouldn't have a clue. And that's basically why the business community gave you the thumbs down in the campaign and why the public re-elected the government. Because we have a strategy to overcome, we have a strategy to overcome these shameful years of neglect of coalition governments from 68, 68 to 83 bar three years of Labor. When the capital stock fell to pieces, when you're putting everything on a resources boom, which didn't eventuate, and you left us with a huge external deficit, which was already 6 per cent of GDP in 1980, 10 years ago, 10 years ago in the period of uh, 
Mr Howard's treasurership, and dare I say it, the Leader of the Opposition when he was the Chief Economic Advisor. So the fact a meretricious player, but of course not so meretricious as the, as the numbers indicated. So Mr Speaker, the answer to the question in, in conclusion is that the government will draw net exports from the system. There was already 1 per cent of net exports for the quarter in the national accounts released in the course of the campaign, and we will run a sensible demand management regime and we'll be having stronger levels of investment again in the coming year because basically profitability is still there, wages are holding very much in accord with our forecasts, and in short, we've actually got a policy in place, something you could never manage.